Hey guys, Lachlan from Cowboy for Game, and today I'm joined here by Ben from Nolan TCG. How's it going? And he has a uh, a deck that I'm very interested in because it's sort of it is a little bit similar to a deck I really love it's, in in what it does. It's a very good deck. Uh, I've run the numbers. It's, it's very good deck. It's very good normal summon search bounce. Yes, it is almost like this is dynamic. Yeah, but. Way better, and not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are... Uh, I do really like this deck, and if... Is it this card, is it, that's really expensive right now? The whole deck is, like, always pricey, but yeah, this is the one that's, like, going up in price. Yeah. Dragon Link players use it as well. If this was cheaper, I would be playing this deck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. But, um, Ben, why don't you tell us a little bit about the deck yeah. and hop into cool. the... We'll take you through it. Um, yeah. It is essentially just normal summon, search, pass. Um, so it starting off, so well. <laughs> the card that does the normal summon, that is Chamber Dragon Maid. Um, you're typically going to use this to search for your Dragon Maid tidying. Um, there are situations, though, where you can use it to search for extenders if you've already opened the tidying, at which point you just make a erratic seal. Um, yeah. Of course, if you already have other extenders, you can always search the fusion spell. This just searches every Dragon Maid spell and trap. Uh, next off, we have the Foolish Burial. So it's three copies of Parlor. Uh, this is the second best Dragon Maid in the deck. Um, this can just essentially Foolish Burial the Tidying, which makes an extender. Uh, you can use it to Foolish the spell card, the, or the fusion spell, gets you the bounce back, gets you the fusion summon. Um, you can also just use it to Foolish like little pieces that you need. Like say if you have Nurse in hand and you have a way to use it as an extender, you can just like Foolish whatever something else is. Extend with the Nurse, Nurse gets the Reborn, keep comboing. Yeah, um, uh, it's really, it's turned into a very uh tidy deck and yes. it just sort of revolves around it it just it does what it does and it does it a lot and it does it every time yeah yeah um next off we're pretty slim on the next two lineups so we're one copy of kitchen um the reason why we've cut down to one copy of kitchen is it doesn't really establish a full combo without an extender so it's probably kind of like bad to draw um i'll typically summon it in the mid game when i'm like ready to kill my opponent on the next turn you'll see the kitchen come out um, but other than that, it's not really massively necessary. Uh, it also loses to, like, Droll. This is, like, if yeah. you use this and get Drolled, uh, that's, like, it doesn't, like, hurt or, like, end your day. It just kind of makes you feel bad if, like, you kitchen to search a chamber to then extend into the chamber to get the searches you need. And if you get Drolled then, it's, like, eh. Bit but, of a rip. Yeah, you just do it next turn instead. Yeah. Just hope, set the trap cards that you've drawn and then yeah. go pass. <laughs> Uh, then for that, next off, we've got one copy of Nurse. Uh, this is our Heratic Seal summon. So on Heratic Seal plays, you go into the Heratic Seal, go like your full combo, set that up, summon the Nurse on the next turn when you do the bounce. Nurse gets you the Reborns, you resolve your Searches, your Foolishes, and then hopefully you just win on the turn after that. Uh, then we get into our Big Dragons. So we're playing three copies of not Big Dragons. So we've got one Lawpar, one Tinek, one Urns. Um... Typically, I do play two urns because it's a good extender. Like, it's good to draw in hand because it makes your normal summon, like, free. Uh, you can just go, like, standby phase, summon urns, then just normal summon later. Good card. Uh, Tinnick gets you over a lot of stuff. Uh, if you draw it, you can just out Dragoon like it's nothing. Uh, and then the lore par is... It comes up quite a lot that it's just an effect veiler. It's just a very slow yeah. effect veiler. Yeah. It can't be activated on the opponent's turn. Uh, if this could be activated on the opponent's turn, this deck would be, like, infinitely better. Yeah, it's very toolbox and what it does in a way where you can yeah. just sort of, you know, you've got options of what you want to do to beat certain things and uh, you, you search them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll typically, like, if I open this and my opponent, say, ended on, like, two negates, I'll just be like, uh, discard law par, target one of your negates, therefore it can't activate. Yeah. Um, or they can just negate it with the law par. And it's still it's the same thing, sense. Yeah. yeah. It just forces a negation and then you can just bring it back later, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, the only time it matters is if it's a Macabre and they decide not to negate it, and you're like, cool, I can just bring this back later because you didn't banish it by negating it with Macabre. Yeah, yeah. Um, then next off, we play into a package that I hate. I can't stand it. It's getting cut. Um, <laughs> it's three copies of Black Metal and then the one copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal. Yeah. Uh, playing this makes the ceiling of your like basic combo so much higher, but it forces it just essentially makes it so you lose to every deck, in, like every hand trap in the format. Yeah. Whereas, like, typically you don't lose to hand traps in this deck. When you're playing this engine, you lose to hand traps. Yeah, like, so it br it brings the height of the deck way up, but it it yeah. really lowers the floor. Yeah. I would much rather these just be, like, 
basic extenders. Um, I'm probably going to cut the three black medals for um, three copies of Noct Division. Yeah. Um, simply because I'm going to change some stuff in the extra deck to just make that a simple draw one combo on the Heroic Seal. Um, that's all you really need to play anyway. Um, this just really gets greedy when you're using like Dragon Link to kind of extend into other stuff. Yeah. And then this will probably get cut for probably just another trap, maybe like a third Solemn Strike. Yeah. Um, like, while this is, this is good, but I found myself, by the end of the tournament, I was like, this is just getting sided out every single game. Yeah. Because like people still side Droll against you, even though it's not very good, but this makes Droll good against you. Yeah. And I hate it. Uh, then we get into our hand traps. So you do have room for seven hand traps, so you can always change them as you wish to your local format. So we play three copies of Ash, uh, just because it's kind of good and versatile at the moment. It can hit everything, so you don't really want to be stressed out about rogue stuff. Ash just does the job. Uh, then we have three copies of Gamma, uh, and of course the Driver. Uh, this was infinitely better last format, because like if your opponent wasn't the most intelligent person in the world, they would uh, wait and then just... You'd go standby phase, and they go true king of all calamities, and you're like, uh, Gamma, now I can go into the Chaos Dragon, I yeah. win. Um, so you still play a lot of power spells, so it's not so so bad. Like if you activate a power spell and they try to negate it with something, you can just gamma them anyway. Uh, given that like the main dragon maid spell, which is the next card, uh, Hospitality, uh, this can be ashed or belled because it sends from deck and it summons from grave or hand. Yeah. Um, so activating this, if your opponent bells it or ashes it, you can just gamma and then you win. Yeah. Like you're not losing out of that situation. Uh, yeah, just the fact that you play so many power spells makes Gamma, like, so useful. Uh, but yeah, we do have the Hospitality. Uh, this is your extender that you can search. Uh, when you're trimming down on that other lineup, if I'm not going to another trap, I'll probably go back to three Hospitality, because it just helps with the grind game a lot more. Uh, then we have two copies of the Fusion spell. Uh, the reason why I play two copies is because we have a lot of Shadol players at Locals, and also people that just play stuff that interacts with your graveyard. Uh, having this crowed like hurts a lot so if they like play the aerial to get rid of this you still have the other one for later which is why i play two yeah uh then we are on to three copies of world legacy guard dragon now um this is dragon link combo if you draw it so another reason why you don't really need the black metal play yeah like, i just don't like this card like i don't like the black metal and yeah this is just good uh, the, yeah the fact that it's hard once per turn i used to play one monster reborn and two of this i've switched since switched to this just because the, uh, the fact that this moves the zone is just, like, so useful. The consistency of seeing it at yeah. three is better than... Yeah. Yeah. Um, after that, we, of course, go into the money card at the back end of the deck that wasn't at the front end of the deck. Uh, <laughs> we've got three copies of Prosp. Um, you're playing a deck where the extra deck doesn't really matter. You don't play draws outside of this. Everything else is just searched. So we just play the three Prosp. Like, yeah. It's a, it's a great card. It shouldn't really need much explanation. Look at the top six. Um, such, card, your, such your side, such your... You see, in theory, that works. But I, people just don't yeah. neg it. <laughs> in, in practice, you activate the Prosp, your opponent doesn't negate it, and then you go, oh, cool, I'm just going to reveal six cards and then just, like, use anything as a blowout, and you just see six Dragon Maids, and you're like, yeah. oh, I, I, I didn't see my droplets here. Yeah. I, I don't win. Or I didn't see a Kaiju. Thank you. <laughs> um, then we go into our trap lineup. The best card in Rise of the Duelist, three copies of Dragon Maid Tiding. I will say that till the end of time. Dragon this card Maid is so howling. good. <laughs> this card is the best. It's howling, but it also summons from grave. But, but better. <laughs> yeah, it has and two effects. Infinitely more searchable. Things. Yes. <laughs> uh, then we play three copies of Ice Dragon's Prison. Yep. Um, as the format gets worse, uh, you can probably maybe switch this around. I still feel as though like Ice Dragon's Prison is too good of a power trap to not be playing at the moment if you're playing a trap deck in your main deck. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, rounding out the main deck, we have two copies of Solemn Strike. Yeah. Um, card's good. It's versatile. It can negate monster effects, which is why we play it. Um, also, <laughs> Judgment takes a lot of life. And yeah. Playing a lot of life hurts sometimes. Especially yeah. Especially if you're in a grind deck where you want to like be on turn three and win the game. Yeah. But now we get off into the extra deck. Um, of course, it is like a Prosp deck, so you're going to see like a lot of stuff that's Prosperity related. Uh, we have, of course, three copies of Shu. Uh, this card will be Secret Rare in the Megatins, and life will be good. So will be Hospitality, and then this deck will be very, very shiny. Still shiny, but it could be shinier. Um, <laughs> the Omni Negation for the deck, card's very, very good. Uh, the only issue is with uh, playing extra, which is the reason why I'm not playing it, is that if you banish all of your houses... Uh, Shu can't resolve, because it has to sh shuffle back and summon this to fully resolve its negation. Yeah. Um, also, the fact that both of these cards, like, reborn uh, in the same <laughs> way. Good catch. Cosmo. 
cat shot in photo. Would you like to hop out of the way? <laughs> Get me a bubs. <laughs> So, anyway, yes, yeah. House Dragon Man. <laughs> standby phase. Uh, so Shu also, on top of being an Omnidigate, summons from Hand or Grave in standby phase, uh, non-targeting almost every card in this deck non-targets what it reborns. Um, in the situations where your opponent decides to try and negate this, and you're, like, already going to win the game, you can just use the negation of Shu or choose not to because Chamber's just going to bring it back anyway. Uh, but if you use the negation of Shu summon house, you resolve the shield effect to summon back from grave. Typically, you'll bring back a nurse, reborn something else, and then the house can still trigger in standby phase, and then you Jesus end up with a full Christ. board. In standby phase, you just have every dragon maid you can possibly have in play. Yeah. And it's, it's pog. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute uh, poggers. Then for a synchro, we are, of course, playing the I win dragon. Um, yep. If you summon this card, you should not be losing. So that's the reason why we play it. Um, yeah, hopefully gamma is effective. The first time I like played with this engine, I resolved this like almost every single match I played in, and it was so good, <laughs> so good. It's been a while since I've gotten to resolve this like properly since then, but when this card resolves, you just win. Yeah. Uh, three copies of Heretic Seal come after that. Um, we are a grind deck, so we are playing the three copies of Heretic Seal. You can trim this to two if you want to play more of like a versatile extra deck package. However, I just feel like when you're not making this, you're like falling behind in advantage on the next turn. Yeah. Like making this for instead of like a um let's go like a Nightmare Phoenix, you do seem as though like the Nightmare Phoenix may get you out of a problem in that situation, but then you're not gonna regain a resource off making the Nightmare Phoenix. Yeah. As it cat comes back again. <laughs> How's it going? Um yeah, that's just the situation where the Nightmare Phoenix is just worse. So Heretic Seal at three, I feel is correct. Yeah. Uh, then we get into our Dragonlink package. So these cards will stay in the the LP and the Pisty, um, just simply because if you resolve the uh, World Legacy Guard Dragon, LP and Pisty are just like free play. You just resolve them, get every resource you need and win. Um, but these two cards will be getting cut. Uh, we play one Al Mirage and one Crossroads Dragon. Uh, this is for just like the standard combo of going into the Fusion plus Heretic Seal off just the World Legacy Guard Dragon plus like the Monsters. Um, I'm going to cut these for two Striker Dragons and then put in the um, into the main deck the card I said earlier. The dragon that summons itself for free. Um, and then oh, draws God. a card when you link it off. I've just forgot. Um, it's in OTS 15. Oh, it's like Absolute or... Absurata. Absurata, yeah. yeah. Absurata. I just forgot what it was. Um, yeah, these are going to be cut for Striker Dragons because then you can just go Striker Dragon, summon the Absurata, make the Heretic Seal, draw a card. Uh, yeah. That just seems like much, much better for a grind deck to be playing as opposed to like something that lets you lose to Nibiru because that getting Nibiru in game one hurts really bad. Yeah. Uh, and then the one time you'll ever really walk into a Nibiru is when you're going for game with the Boral Sword Dragon. Yeah. Um, this is just like a game over card where typically on your combo you'll go, when you're ready to kill them, you can make a Radic Seal in transition. Uh, then you'd go like your LP, shift its zone, summon from deck, turn whatever you summon from deck into a Pisty. Summon from Grave. Uh, then these four will link into your Boral Sword. Uh, then because you've just summoned from Grave like a normal Dragon Maid monster, you just switch it out at start of battle phase for something big. Yeah. And then that's AK damage. Yeah. That's, that's game over because they all have like the above 2,000 attack. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's it for the deck though. Yeah, no, it's... um, I really like this deck. I, I rate it as a... um. Uh, dare I say... Uh, Mid-tier... <laughs> Deck. Like if if more people played this deck, um, it would be feared a lot more than it is. Yes, just, absolutely. The fact that it has that stigma of being like a waifu deck means like a lot of good players would like not play this. Yeah, and a lot of the players. Oh my god, <laughs> Hosmer is very really interested in. She um, loves dragon mates, don't you? Yeah, you love dragon mates. All right, the cat can be in the frame. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, no, this deck is is quite fun, and it's. It's far more powerful than most people think it is. Yeah. It um, it just has a way of seeing out games that you wouldn't think it would. One hundred percent. Like just the fact that a lot of decks can't play through no normal summon. Like, yeah, exactly. You, you normal summon something, it, it goes. They go bounce back, and, and they go. Oh. Uh, I didn't draw my in archetype zodiac barrage. Yes. I lose. How do I play? <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. But um. Ben, thank you for uh, for giving us this deck profile. Uh, no problem. Where can people find you? Uh, at Nolan TCG. Link is always in the description. Absolutely. And um, yeah, this is Cowboy for Game. If you've enjoyed, uh, subscribe, leave a like, comment. 
give us that sweet interaction. She said this at the start. Yeah, yeah. We'll just. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> Alrighty. Thanks, Ben. Bye.